In this video, we're going to be starting a completely new series on the channel where I'm going to be shutting down my international master brain while playing on a new account starting from 500 using the Karokan only by following this simple rules with the goal of helping you instantly improve within this rating range. Right, everybody getting the black pieces, opponent goes e4. We know that uh, our first two moves are c6, d5. No matter what my opponent does, you can literally pre-move that. But we're not going to do so because pre-moves are not allowed yet. And we're going to be playing the Karo Khan against the advanced variation. I made the recommendation is to play C5. But chances are, if you're in this rating range, you don't know theory. And you just know when you play the Karo Khan, you want to get the active bishop. Because Karo Khan is basically like an improved French. That's how you want to see it. French defense, it's E6, D5, and then the bishop is restricted. So in the Karo, you just want to have that uh, light square bishop open. So therefore, we're going to get the bishop out. Okay, that's basically where all my theory ends now. I'm just going to be playing kind of on my own and I'll just try to develop pieces. Okay, we're going to play e6. With every single move that we make, we try to develop something. Okay, I was thinking maybe to check here, but he played c3, so that's uh, no longer a thing. Now, usually it's best to start by developing the king side because we want to get castle as soon as we can with the black pieces however in the karo khan you will sometimes have a bit less space than your opponent which is something that will get comfortable with but we can start it in this fashion and then just move the knight away kind of to make room for the bishop and then we get castle okay attacking the piece by the way if opponent uh, doesn't see it we're gonna be capturing that just plays queen to f3. Uh, yeah, we can trade. I mean, trades are definitely very common for this rating range. And I would also recommend you get into this habit of uh, trading your knights for the enemy bishops. That is usually just a very nice uh, strategical thing to get used to. So we're going to get in the bishop paired already. Um, and we'll just get uh, castled. I told you to do so. Uh, we're gonna stick to that what kind of coach do you think i am i'm just telling you to do something and then i do the opposite no that's not how it works okay he plays knight f3 I'm gonna get castled as i uh, promised and then we'll try to develop uh, my last piece the knight okay so he plays g4 it is becoming very interesting because now uh, opponent is gonna try and attack me yeah i'm just gonna go back i think everybody will Kind of play this move instantly. And it will be interesting if he plays h4. Because then he's like really up to something. He just castles. We'll finish development. And then on the next move, it is important that, uh, you know, once you finish development, we start playing in the center. So playing in the center could be either c5 or f6. Now, in this position, f6 was pretty tempting. But when they play g5, with these pawns eyeballing uh, f6, I feel like it is a very difficult move to play f6, even though it may still be very legit, because rook can uh, like really activate down this file. We'll just, uh, okay, we can either strike in the center now, or we can move the queen to connect the rooks. Now, even better if you can uh, find this type of moves to attack the enemy pawns and hopefully he's gonna play a3 now i really want you to pause the video here and uh try to come up with the best move for black because oh boy it like really breaks my heart not to play this move because black just has a brilliant way to just end the game in two moves forced yes two moves you heard it right you can literally finish him off with a beautiful queen takes on c3 pawn takes on c3 Force move, only move, and then bishop takes on a3 is gonna be a checkmate. Because this bishop covers the other two squares. But! 500! Do you think they sack the queens like that? Hell no! Hell no! We'll just uh, follow our rules. Play in the center, go c5. Try to open up the file, and then get the rook onto the open file. I think this is pretty easy gameplay that you can use. Okay, he plays h4, fine. He's trying to do something. Nice. I'm just gonna be take. I'm just gonna be taking on d4 and getting rook onto the open file. Yeah, pretty simple. 
a rook typically. A rook onto the opened file. He may be playing h5 now, targeting my bishop. That is once again gonna be pretty tricky to deal with. Okay, opponent plays bishop to b5, targeting the knight. Okay, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more aggressive this time, just play knight c5. Okay, he goes bishop to d7. Okay, this is a pretty interesting move because it's targeting the rook, but it's also highlighting a pretty common uh, concept for this rating range that uh, they don't know the knight move backwards. So, because it's a free piece, I'm gonna take. Else, I know a lot of people may have just ignored it and played a rook somewhere. I'm gonna take it though because it's a free piece and that's how it goes. Okay, he plays h5. Uh, once again, if you know tactics, there's like rook c3, queen c3, any kind of moves made in two. Yeah, you, you don't know tactics within this rating range, so we'll just try to put our bishop on a square where it's still defended. Okay, like bishop to d3, I mean, bishop is not defended, but it's like, no, not attack. You get a point. We're gonna be moving the bishop. And okay, he plays rook h3, attacking it one more time. Yeah, we'll just try to basically keep our pieces defended. But I'm gonna defend it with a knight. I feel like the knight would be easier to spot and uh, yeah, more people could do so. Uh, okay, opponent plays h6. Now we'll just try to sidestep. Okay, he wants to open, we don't let him open. He played g6. I think that's pretty logical and easy. You don't want to be opening up opponent's files onto your king. He's gonna play g6 and then, uh, yeah, we'll just try to make moves uh, in the center of the board. Like knight e4, for instance, just activating, you know. He takes, I'm gonna take it with a bishop. It's pretty normal stuff. Uh, at this point, we have an extra piece, so the position is uh, completely winning. Okay, he attacks my bishop, I'm gonna go back. If he takes uh, with a knight, we take with a pawn. Okay, he plays queen f4 and... Uh, oh, we actually run out of time. Which is actually really normal. Especially when you get positions that are like pretty chaotic. Okay, don't get me wrong. It would have been like really brilliant if we were to play in this position. The brilliant queen takes on c3. Only move pawn takes, and then get a standing checkmate. But you're like a 500 rated guy. Like, you shouldn't be really expecting uh, miracles at this point. Okay, just try to get your pieces developed and then play in the center. Chances are, you know, opponents will make an unforced error. Key unforced error for this game. Opponent played bishop to d7. This is the kind of thing that you want to take advantage of. Do that regularly and no matter whether you lose on time here and there, you're still gonna be able to climb. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody, getting another black game. Opponent goes z4. Uh, at this point, you already know that uh, we're gonna be playing c6, d5 pretty much against uh, anything that white does. And the main goal of ourselves in the opening is to simply try and get our pieces developed according to the center. So he plays knight to c3, he's gonna do d5. And yeah, with pretty much every single move that we play, the goal is to get uh, something developed. Put in place knight to f3. So I'm not really gonna be using a high level theory or anything like that within this rating range, but I'm gonna be playing the first uh, move of the variation de4 so we take and then uh you know usually whenever you can take on e4 that is a good move uh in the caro canon in general when you can trade opponents pawn from the center it is a pretty good idea so he takes back with a knight and at this point you have a choice between a number of moves i'm gonna be playing knight f6 and then i'm pretty much uh gonna act like uh you know I, I, I've never seen this position before, and we just take the game from there. Now, I would be expecting Y to take on F6 most of the times. He could obviously do anything, uh, like hang a knight, for example, which <laughs> we're gonna be taking. Then just try to finish development, okay? Bishop to d3, hitting our knight. The knight move backwards. Uh, pro tip, keep that in mind, and 
the main idea in the Karokan is that you want to get castled, but you don't want to play a move like e6, restricting the bishop. So first you need to get the bishop active, and you already are probably familiar with this uh, pin, being pretty annoying for the opponent. And then we just want to go, go like e6, bishop e7, castle. Okay, he goes for queen to e1. Now this allows us to take which a lot of you I know may be playing. Normally, you want to wait for uh, h3, hitting the bishop, and then you take. Because he played the queen to e1, taking is great because he's going to be forced to take back with a pawn, leaving him uh, with a very difficult position uh, on the king side. If you think about it, these pawns will keep him like so uncomfortable, like after taking, imagine he would have recaptured. That it's like basically you need to sleep uh, with a door wide open to your apartment. So good luck doing that. <laughs> H3. I'm just gonna save my bishop. I'm gonna go back. G4. Slide it back. Else we just uh, finish castling with very simple moves. So that is the plan. You know what the main goal is. Then uh, it is way simpler to watch out for what your opponent plays because. One of the biggest uh, issues with low rated players is that they are like a little bit uncomfortable and freak out so much about what they are supposed to do, which usually just makes them uh, completely forget what uh, White's plan is. Now, opponent plays the move bishop to c7, which is a free piece, so I'm going to take it. Just notice the multitude of uh, unforced errors in this game that we just develop and uh, we are collecting three pieces one after the other so yeah if this was a tennis game opponent is uh just you know he's supposed to serve but he's just making a double fault every time so uh, he cannot even get the first serve in which just results in uh yeah effortless points for us i mean collect three pawn okay opponent plays uh rook to c1 at this point if you're like 500 you're very likely to Go ahead and take the bishop. You're like, oh no, free bishop. But then opponent actually grabs the free queen. How did that even happen? So he played rook c1, pretty clever move. Pinning us. And okay, it is what it is. Sometimes you're going to miss this type of things, but it doesn't mean the game is over. Okay, you should never resign. We'll still try to develop and get castled. So we'll start with uh, the bishop, hit the rook, and he goes rook to c1. Okay, had better move to check us, but he didn't play it. Okay, castle, finally. And then it's about uh, getting developed. Okay, queen to d2, targeting my pawn. We'll try to keep that strong pawn by doing bishop e2. And then knight e6, rook d8, bring the rooks closer to the middle, and we just play e5, e4. Okay, rook e1, in the bishop, you know we take three pieces, so we take his rook. And then we develop the knight, expecting him to go queen d3. And now we're going to be placing rooks on the open files. So rook d8, and then the other rook comes to c8. Now, at this point, we have a very nice move, which you can try to find by pausing the video, which is bishop h2, discovery and winning his queen. Okay, that's nice. But uh, yeah, we're not allowed to use tactics. So instead, I'm just going to put my rooks uh, onto the open files. And because it is an end game, I'm going to be bringing my king closer to the middle. It is very important that uh, you get into this habit of using your king. A free pawn, I'm going to take that. Like in football, you know, when there is like, uh, let's say the last attack of the game and there's nothing to lose, even the goalkeeper goes into the enemy penalty area to maybe, you know, like uh, score a header. He just gives you a nice little edge. This is the same way that we bring the king into the endgame. And pretty funny, in the meantime, opponent just hanged his queen. Just, uh, you know, gonna retreat with the bishop and we'll bring the king. Then we'll go uh, rook onto the open file. And at this point, uh, yeah, we take free pawn. We'll have to speed up a little. There's not much time uh, on the clock, but we will go ahead and push. Getting a queen, no pre-moves allowed. And hopefully this is gonna be enough for us to mate with 18 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna get a queen. I'm gonna go uh, bishop d6 check. At this point, uh, I feel like lower rated players just freak out and give countless checks. But luckily, we might have trapped him into the ladder checkmate. 
because there is queen b2, this is cut, and then uh, there is uh, rook to c1. So okay, we were pretty fortunate to win this game because we got very low on time. Like, uh, if you lose this game on time, it is like completely okay. That's not really a problem. It is important that uh, you play uh, your game well. You like take the free piece. And okay, sometimes, you know, it happens that, uh, you know, white is giving up so many pieces. We just, we are so used to take free stuff that we believe everything that the opponent gives us is completely free. So we fall for a trap, okay? Like somebody that makes three huge blunders in a row is very unlikely to, you know, find a great move like rook c1, which happens he did. And we, we lost like a full queen in one move, but the position was already so winning that it's still... The game was interesting, so with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know that both of my courses are now on a sale. The Karo Khan course that just launched and the uh, London System one as well. For $20 each, you can get complete access to these courses, which I think considering these projects combined took me around 2000 hours just to specially design them in order to help beginners skyrocket their ratings. I think you're not getting the worst deal. Anyways, if you don't like what you get, you can get your money back immediately within the first 30 days. Now. Back into the video. All right, everybody, getting another black game. I'm gonna be sticking with uh, the Karo Khan, playing c6, d5 against pretty much anything that white does, and uh, this is what we're gonna play. Facing the mighty hillbilly attack, which, you know, it is, it is what it is, and whenever something like this happens, okay, I don't know why I'm talking like that, uh, but... Obviously, hillbilly attack is not a good move against the Karo Khan, first of all. And on bishop to d3, I recommend whenever you have d4 in the Karo Khan to get started, we should be playing that move. So we take, hitting their bishop, and then uh, with every move that I'm playing, I'm trying to develop a piece. So we start with a knight, typically developing knights uh, before bishops is ideal. So knight goes into the natural square. Targeting the enemy bishop, so if it's a free piece, we're gonna take it. Also, trading knight for bishop is pretty nice for us, and okay, goes bishop back. And now, it is important that you understand the main idea with the Karo Khan is we wanna be developing the light square bishop before playing the move e6, because we don't have, we don't wanna have the bishop restricted by the pawn. It's just, you have such a nice piece. It's like you own a Ferrari and you just keep it in the garage. No, I mean, why would you even do that? So you get the bishop out first. Okay, we get uh, hit by uh, this. Just slide back. And once you make sure this bishop is getting out, then you just try to castle. Okay, opponent clearly goes for a <laughs> pretty crazy attacking play, but we'll just develop, okay? Play e6, open up path for this bishop, and uh, yeah, as a rule of thumb, I would say uh, e7 is always reasonable square, d6 is even uh, a bit more uh, active, it's just that for low rated games, a lot of people would be playing bishop to g5, I think bishop e7 is pretty nice uh, defending against, uh, against any of that, so yeah. You can really do your own uh, decision. I'm just going to play it here. Castle. Knight goes to d7. We pick it up from there. Okay. Getting castle as soon as we can. Especially with the black pieces. And uh, finish development. And before we do anything, it's important to get rooks connected. So notice that we always develop the queen uh, last, if possible. So I would say queen to c7 is a nice safe square. And now it's time to bring the rook onto the open file. Problem is we have two rooks and only one open file. I mean, semi-open file here. This very much depends whether you're planning to break with e5 or c5. Yeah, we'll just get pretty random one. Usually <laughs> uh, rook a d8. I think personally I prefer the f rook, but I feel like this would be more natural for most people. And okay, we just got our development and then we'll just try to play into the center. Typically in the Karo Khan, we strike in the center with the move c5. So that's what we're going to do. We finish development, developed every single one of our pieces. Rooks connected. 
Rook is to the open file. King is safe. Next move, we break in the center. Okay, with bishop f4, he's attacking my queen. So we can either move the queen or we can block the attack with bishop to d6. Yeah, I think uh, we're just going to be playing uh, the move uh, queen to b6. That sounds uh, more natural to me. Just uh, attacking the pawn. Or still true to our idea of breaking with c5. He castles, so he's defending the pawn. And we'll just, uh, we'll just play c5. Yeah, not really many questions uh, about this. We're going to take 1d4 because that was the point of having pushed. Takes with the bishop, targeting my queen. And now we'll just uh, block with a bishop. Okay, putting pressure on the center. Pretty simple stuff so far. Now, plays knight e2 defending. And we're going to go for the trade. I think very likely outcome for loaded games. He takes with the knight. A move like uh, knight e5. Just because it's like pinning, putting pressure on f3. I think this would be very appealing for a variety of players. Now he goes for the move knight e4, which is very interesting, targeting my queen. Where I think simplest is just to retreat, because you don't have that many squares. So we're going to keep the queen onto the open file. Okay, this guy is playing pretty well, I have to say. He plays the move f4, targeting my knight. We take the free pawn. That's a must. We got to take the free pieces. And on h3, if he finds that, we're going to have to retreat. That's literally the only square for the knight available. If he doesn't make any like critical moves, we'll try to double up on the open file. By the way, uh, for those of you that are wondering, yes, we did have uh, like rook d4 the whole time with a tactic, queen c2 mate, but we're not able to use tactics yet. So on queen to b4, we have uh, a fork. Definitely available, but we'll try to bring the rook into the game. So we'll do rook d7. Preparing this move, and he plays knight b5, targeting my queen. Now, chances are, if you've been paying attention to the position, you're gonna notice that this is a checkmate in one. So I think we have to play this move, okay? I know maybe some of you could forget about it, but this is like really a must, okay? It's free, we gotta do it. That's the rules. So. Despite the opponent having played really decent for this rating range in a way that he didn't blunder any pieces for like a lot of moves. I mean, really uh, kudos to this opponent. Like he didn't blunder anything for like 20 moves, which is very much impressive for this level. And yeah, I mean, we just stick with common sense moves. And luckily we wake up in a position where we have made in one. Anyways, uh, if he doesn't hang mate, probably we would have flagged. But what is more important is that uh, by playing this very simple moves, we get uh, still a completely winning position, despite the fact that he played like really well for his rating range. So uh, yeah, with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody, looks like we're getting another black game. I'm going to be sticking with a Kyle Khan. All the theory that we know it's c6 d5 we take on e4 if possible and we try to play with an active high square bishop let's see what happens e5 if they take meaning the exchange variation i'm uh, i'm very happy to take taking with a pawn taking towards the center following very basic and important fundamental rules and then we're gonna have a pretty simple idea we're going to be developing the knights onto their natural squares. Because, you know, that is like pretty much the first thing that uh, you learn to do. And whenever he plays knight f3, we're going to pin. Because you know how much these low rated players love to pin in general. I mean, we just see an example here. We may even uh, see in case of knight f6 the other bishop landing onto g5. So it's not that, you know, pinning us black is wrong or anything. It's actually a very strong move into the Karo Khan. So I'm going to play simple moves, get a knight is out. No need to spend that much time on it, honestly, <laughs> as I do. But hopefully uh, the commentary is somewhat instructive, at least hopefully. I mean, you let me know in the comments. Probably you're like, what is this guy trying to do playing in this strange way like a 500? 
I want the old commentary back. Okay, if you are like that, let me know. As predicted, we got the Taekwondo bishops. He's like ready to just take me down into like a carry fight right now. Uh, just, you know, fair enough. It's a battle that he may very well just win because I'm terrible at fighting. But I'm going to go bishop to g4. Okay, just following the rule, developing with tempo, and also just getting an active bishop. Okay, he attacks my bishop, so... Um, yeah, we're not going to be hanging any pieces, or at least not on purpose. So we're going to slide back the bishop. Okay, that's very thematic, very standard. Bishop slides back. He attacks the bishop. I really have uh, only one move. So the nice thing in chess uh, sometimes is if you watch out for your opponent's last move, he will usually dictate what you're supposed to do. Okay, and now my opponent plays uh, h4. Very strong move, threatening to push h5 and trap my bishop. Do you think I'm going to see that as a 500? Hell nah. Just play e6, try to develop. Go bishop e7 castle. Now I realize that... Okay, he went h5, he's pretty much trapping my bishop. Okay, what do we do? Anyways, even if uh, we make a blunder, we try to get the best out of this situation. So we want to take at least a pawn. So I'm going to be taking on C2. Okay, take one pawn. We're kind of down uh, in material a little bit, but still, we'll just try to finish development. Typically castling short. So, bishop e7. Short castle is next, kind of no matter what he does. He castles long, and we're going to go short. Really simple and straightforward stuff this far. On h6, I'm planning to just uh, sidestep. Okay, this is pretty simple. You don't want to open up his rook. And yeah, very much sticking with simple play uh, up to this moment. Expecting him to maybe develop. He plays f4 instead. Hanging a free pawn. Okay, I said three pawns, three pieces, we take. So... Alternative would have been to just play rook c8, get the rook onto the open file. But free pawn is prioritized. Bishop e7, we take with the queen, very important, developing the last piece and getting our bad boys connected. And okay, we got two pawns for the piece. And we're like fully developed. I mean, not the worst outcome of the opening. Definitely not the best, but not the worst either. Okay, bishop to d3. Meaning uh, the bishop is interrupting uh, the defense of the rook. Which tells us, okay, we have to take another free pawn and also attacking his queen. So let's see. Is he going to spot the attack onto his queen? Probably. Okay, three pawns at this point. It's really not such a bad position after all. Okay, he plays queen to g2. Targeting uh, the knight. Where, yeah, if you go passive. That is giving you kind of like a playable position. But if you are like, uh, let's say, uh, paying enough attention, you can notice that there is this very nice little fork that you can use, which uh, is definitely winning some of our material back. I'm going for this move specifically because for 500 rated games, I kind of know that you guys have a problem moving the knight backwards. Like knight f6. Uh, no trash talk intended, but it is how these games go, okay? I've got analytics to back it up. You can contact me in private for that. I'm just kidding. It's just <laughs> experience uh, based on this rating plan. Okay, queen h3 targeting the knight. We take free stuff, okay? So we take the rook. And then if he takes my knight, we're gonna play a pretty simple move. Just gonna get the rook onto the open file. You already know it by now. Okay, we get the rook onto the open file. And then uh, what do we do? We need to bring the last piece into the attack. So probably it is uh, going to be very good in the long run if you just play a move like uh, rook to c7, okay? You just prepare to bring the other rook. Okay, bishop takes on g6. Uh, I told you we take towards the center. So we're going to stick with that. Even though it does allow his pawn to push, still we're going to be sticking uh, with the rule. Okay, now we have important move. If king g7, he can promote. So important to avoid that. Hopefully you can spot that. 
So I'm just gonna go uh, into the corner. And well, next move, in case he doesn't attack any of my pieces, I'm like very likely to play rook c8. Okay, just continuing our plan with, uh, yeah, making use of the open file. And already we have a threat of checkmate in one. So just look, opponent, move 24. It's like he he's just upset about the g1 knight. It's uh, They got into a fight and then they don't talk anymore. He just doesn't want to move the knight at all. It's almost like it's not even on the board. Okay, so next up, we can throw in a check by infiltrating. Uh, we can also play moves uh, into the center. So e5 would be a move in the center, but that's kind of hanging. Pretty important pawn. So I think it's fair to just begin with a check. And at this point, even 500, I'm pretty sure will get the feeling that we need to try and checkmate White's king. So in order to do that, bringing more pieces, it's pretty important. So we're going to play a move like uh, knight c2. Okay, just thinking rook a1 is checkmate next. Of course, it's not checkmate, but we forget. We still live with the impression that the knight is on d4 covering this square. We think rook a1 next will be checkmate. Okay, if he takes... Uh, that's a shock, obviously, because the knight moved backwards. What is that even? And yeah, we're going to be taking with this rook. Just because uh, we want to get as aggressive as we can. And next up, we got some pressure here going on. And okay, he plays queen to b3. Very nice move uh, by my opponent. Now, uh, yeah, I think a very sort of natural move would be uh, something like rook to d2 just trying to play rook to d1 and then checkmate because it's about the enemy king and okay let's see knight f3 we have to collect three rook takes my own rook we're gonna be taking uh, the pawn and then yeah picking up the free stuff let's see what opponent plays Knight f3. We're gonna play uh, queen to f6, trying to activate the queen. But uh, yeah, probably we're gonna get flagged pretty soon because there's only yeah 0.5, and we lose on time, despite having a completely winning position. Which you know it is how some of these games are gonna go if uh, your opponent just plays very fast. Okay, you don't care about that. The main thing that we are concerned of is, okay, making these simple moves. Or I notice we get trapped, okay, because we're like 500. We don't know what's coming. Yeah, we play basic fundamentals. We're not even able to calculate one move in advance, but we just try to develop. And we lose a bishop, yes? Just look at what happens next. Okay, we play, I think, five pretty simple moves. Opponent starts giving uh, back some of the material. And not long after, we just uh, wake up into this position where, uh, yeah, we just start collecting a bunch of pieces. He even gives uh, a bishop where, yeah, even safer, I believe it's to take this way, but you really want to get used to the rule of capturing towards the center. And the rest, yes, of course, it's still like completely winning. But you know, we just got a little bit overexcited having these rooks uh, walking into his backyard. Uh, he was like a little bit fortunate uh, not to run into like a direct checkmate. These things will happen, okay? You're going to be getting very close, uh, like basically already filling the zone and still miss some of this checkmate. So it's all good. Out of the process, keep playing it uh, in this way. and. Uh, you're going to be able to climb uh, in the long run. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody getting another game with the black pieces. Going to be sticking with uh, our beloved opening and the opponent goes knight to c3. Going to be playing d5. And he already had pre-moved bishop to c4. Oh my. All right, you got to relax for a second. Take a breath of fresh air. That was a bit unexpected. <laughs> oh, oh, there he goes. 
Here it goes again. What is this game? All right, I'm trying to stay composed and have a very serious attitude towards this, but oh my. We're, we're off onto a strong start. <laughs> That's uh, what I can definitely say. Okay, we're just going to try to develop while uh, targeting opponents' pieces and simply stick to, you know, the fundamentals. That's how you're going to be winning these games. Okay, opponent plays queen to g5. Now, uh, what he's doing is actually very instructive in a way that uh, he's making a very typical beginner mistake since he's developing the queen very early on into the game. My uh, bit about this is that low-rated players, uh, you know, just learn that the queen is the most powerful piece and they get so excited that they literally just start using it as if it was an AK-47 just going after the opponent right away. No, that's in fact not how it goes. The queen is like a very precious piece that uh, you should really be very careful about when using. Uh, queen usually very effective when having a lot of open lines. Uh, also a bit similar to the rooks. Now that you know this uh, little thing about a queen, uh, yeah, we'll start uh, just either harassing it or developing the bishop. Okay, harassing the queen. I think uh, it is a move that you can probably come up with yourself too. Let's see what opponent goes uh, with a queen. Now, he had his cup of fun, I was about to say, but he still uh, keeps shocking me with another queen move to f5. And queen f5 is not an amazing move because it just uh, stands in the way of the bishop. So as the rule says, we're going to be taking the three pieces. He even had it pre-moved. Like, it, it was a plan. It was all planned. All the way. Okay. He's like, just a bit of a evil mastermind. There's a hidden idea behind it. But apparently not. Because, finds the resign button. Get this game. No analysis is required. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Getting another black game. Opponent goes e 4 It's gonna be a Karo Khan game. So just uh, placing the pawn into the center, taking on e4 uh, if available, and just recapping. And the main goal of our opening will be to get knights developed onto their natural squares. And uh, ideally, if opponent allows it, uh, we'll try to develop our bishop. Okay, place a uh, bishop back. Now, e5 is, uh, of course, a pretty nice move that you can play uh, and uh, just sort of uh, grab the center. I think it makes definitely sense to mention it. And, okay, in this example, I'm going to go ahead and even play it. Okay, getting the BBC, the big black center. Already, yeah, just, an, as you know, uh, a weapon that can hardly be countered. Um, when I play knight c3 actually trying to counter our weapon and there's basically two ways of playing this you can either push the pawn but the nice thing about the center is that uh, it's really nicely placed uh, the way it is controlling all of these uh, central squares so for this reason i don't want to advance any of these pawns because notice whenever you play d4 the squares will become available i'm just going to develop it and defend my pawn Trying to defend against one more threat, I think is something that we are allowed to do. Uh, which is going to be, yeah, yet again. Something here. Developing knights onto their natural squares. And then we're going to get this pin, of course, onto the knight. And for now, I think we're going to stick with uh, h3, bishop takes on f3. Okay, a little bit later into the series, we're going to have a part where we meet h3 with bishop back onto h5, which is more like uh, the so-called uh, better way of playing it, uh, because it's keeping the tension, it's just more traditional. Just, you know, so you know a little bit from what's coming. Uh, just will develop my bishop now, usually e7 is a pretty fine square uh, for the bishop into this rating range. Preparing to get castled on the next move. Opponent goes bishop to a4. Targeting uh, the knight. 
Now, I think we're going to be sticking with Castle. However, there is a better move for Black, which you can try to find by pausing the video. Because a very important idea that uh, you will be getting introduced to is the so-called concept to PP on the PP. And with that, I don't mean like literally, but to put pressure on the pin pieces. So you see there is the spin going on onto the knight and e4 typically is a killer move, just uh, kind of capitalizing on that pin. However, we're going to be a good boy and just get our stuff developed. Castling. And let's see what opponent has in mind. Now, if he's eager enough, he has bishop captures. And then the e5 pawn remains undefended. Which is, you know, sometimes the cost of having a very nice and beautiful pawn center. It can be compared to like just buying a very expensive car. It's gonna be, you know, like a lot of taxes that you have to pay every year and stuff like that. Um, so it is the same. Here I'm just paying the bill. Opponent won a free pawn. Okay, we lost a pawn. <laughs> How is that saying? We lost a, a battle, not the war. No need to panic. We still have decent development and, uh, well, what do you do now? You just get your uh, rooks onto the open files. So this is open file. This is semi-open file because opponent still has only one pawn on it. So very important, an open file is a file where uh, there are no pawns of either side. Uh, I mean, ideally yours in case of semi-open file. It's just going to get rooks here. Very simple, trying to get my pieces involved, uh, opponent doing some shady business over there with the rook. I'm just going to get my rooks down there, okay? I'm going to develop my queen also. Uh, I could have developed the queen to begin with. Oh, just takes, take three pieces, that was defended. Um, so, yeah, just play safe, solid moves and... You know, I'd be surprised if your opponent is not going to be making an uh, unforced error. Okay, he plays the move knight to d4, which is targeting my knight. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to be making a move to defend it and develop the queen as well. So defend the knight. Now notice how nicely my rooks are connected. And next, we'll try to put pressure in the center. Okay, I'm thinking a move like bishop to f6, just eyeballing the d4 square, which is, uh, you know, just trying to constantly have an eye on uh, these squares. Okay, he plays f3, very nice move by my opponent. Winning a tempo, we just go back and notice that we no longer have bishop f6 idea because bishop does not uh, place itself over the knight. Not in this patch at least. And then... Still, we have an idea to play for the center. Move like bishop to c5. Okay, b4. We need to capture the, the free pawn. We can do it either way. I guess we'll do it with a bishop. For no uh, special reason, really. It's nice that we get uh, the file open for the rook. And uh, yeah, next up, still really having an eye on to bishop c5 that's putting pressure into the center of the board more specifically onto this uh onto this knight which also happens to be pinned our opponent just plays knight a4 meaning uh, this is no longer idea because of knight x so we're not going to be playing this anymore but there is another way to put pressure on the knight which is c5 which also happens finally enough to be a double attack because queen's opening up and it is very important that you want to get into this habit of looking for undefended pieces because that's really what's going to be winning you so many games below 1000. It is really the best just advice that I can give. Here you see this undefended knights. Watch out. Okay, there is a move to attack both and you just won the game because of that. Take knight on a4. Then, uh, okay, he takes on c5. We just take uh, the free piece. Also give him a check. And probably playing queen to d4 onto the next move uh, just because it's a move into the center of the board. Yeah, queen to d4. Targeting the rook. So, free piece. We're going to take it if uh, if allowed. The opponent plays c3. 
not giving it to me. And I think at this point, we're going to go Queen F2. Just uh, seizing the initiative and trying to go for the back ranker. You are probably already familiar with this motif. One of the most common ways to end the game in this type of rating range. And yeah, get the back ranker. Notice the key idea and the key recurring theme is that, uh, well, we developed our, all of our pieces. We delivered an attack. And in the meantime, opponent literally did not even touch these pieces. They are already, you can see the dust that's starting to get onto them. And we get a checkmate because uh, King is onto the edge and it's got these pawns that are blocking any escaping squares. Notice that, uh, you know, if uh, he had the rook open, this was not a problem, but because the bishop did not develop, uh, rook does not jump over bishop. So this is a checkmate indeed. So, yeah, I think uh, this game was relatively straightforward. The main uh, idea that I wanted to uh, pick up from here is that uh, you want to get into this sort of habit of uh, pretty much spotting what are the open files. So files where are no open, I mean, there are where are no pawns. So rook eight is definitely a move that you should really have on your radar. And also a semi-open file because there, there is only one pawn by the opponent. So rook to b8, once again, very important move. And uh, on top of that, uh, really game changer concept that will uh, really skyrocket your rating if you pay attention to it looking for undefended pieces as uh, it's showcased in this game knights are undefended we spot that and then it's easy to just try and attack both of them because you know you only look for things that uh, you spot otherwise maybe you've got a tempting move but if you don't know where to look it is way uh, harder uh, to find. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody managed to get another black game. When it goes uh, e4. We're going to be sticking with uh, our guns here. Following the <laughs> five moves of theory that we kind of know. I mean, semi know. Um, and, of course, taking with a pawn. Taking towards the center. Facing the exchange variation uh, once again. And uh, just pretty much keeping it simple. Knights on the natural squares. Uh, you know how it goes. Now he's giving a check. Okay, we're going to be blocking with a knight. Because it is a move that we were about to play anyways. And we recapture with a pawn. And he plays knight e5 now. Wow. Very aggressive stuff. So this is a tricky possession where I feel like one of the good moves would be to move the queen. But ideally and fundamentally, you want to move uh, the queen usually last. So for this reason, I'm considering a move such as bishop to d7 or bishop to b7. But you kind of know that you want to get uh, the active bishop. So on that note, I'm going to be playing c5. Just advancing the pawn simply so we don't lose it. Okay, next. I'll just try to continue developing. Okay, he plays the move c4. I feel like most people would be taking because it's just, uh, you know, it's just a pawn that's kind of <laughs> hanging, it seems. We're going to be sticking with takes. He takes for the knight and now we'll try developing. Knight to f6. And he plays f3. Fine. I want to play e6, bishop, e7, castle, but I'm going to get... Uh, the bishop kind of uh, stuck. So I'm just going to do bishop to f5. And then, uh, oh, plays the move d3. d3 is a free pawn, and the rule says we have to take these. We're going to take it with a queen. Even nicer if we can uh, force an endgame uh, with an extra pawn. That is very juicy. Think he's knight. Now his knight attacks my bishop. Hopefully you can notice that the knight moved backwards too. And okay, ideally you want to keep the bishop. So you don't want to give up a uh, bishop for knight so easily at least when you have a simple move like let's say there to keep or back onto a6. But I feel like a lot of you get into the mindset, okay, I gotta trade all the pieces, which is good when you're up material, so you will take. 
Then we play e6, preparing to develop. Also attack the knight. Okay, he just plays knight back. Fine, he developed the knight back. I mean, not developed, but moved it. You get the point. And we'll just get ourselves castle. You can see typical mistakes. Just the knight is doing back and forth. This is not really making any progress. And what are we going to do next? It is very important that uh, you get into the habit of uh, sporting what are the open files. So open file, the D file. So all of these squares, you see no pawns. And semi-open file, the B file. All of these squares until uh, there is a pawn on B2. So first, open file is even better. And then there is a semi-open file. Okay, so we place uh, the rooks there. Just, you know, following the rules. And the opponent plays b3. Okay, what's next? Uh, we need to make some moves into the center of the board. So, this being the center of the board, I'm going to play rook d5. Also, attacking the enemy knight. Let's see what opponent will play. He just plays f4. Defending uh, the knight. And okay. Now, because uh, it is very simple and pretty straightforward, we're going to be doubling up onto the open file. This is pretty standard procedure. So just um, still making very simple moves. I'm not really trying to do any fancy stuff. Okay, he plays knight c6. So hopefully, if you can see that this is attacking both the rook and the bishop, you will play rook d7. Still keeping uh, pressure on the open file, but defending uh, as well so we just recapture it takes we're forced to take back and uh okay next move we can just play this move to double up onto the open file okay and this is becoming very interesting because we are about to get an end game and this is pretty unfortunate because uh opponent literally hanged uh his rook so we can take it or we can try to make it uh, a bit more instructive. And I'll do that by bringing my king. Okay. I want to really show you the idea of uh, how powerful a king can be into the end game. Okay. If you compare it with soccer, it's like uh, the last corner kick or the last uh, basically attack of the game. But if there is nothing to lose, even the goalkeeper goes into the enemy penalty area to hopefully score a header just give you know a little bit of pressure to his team so this rook has been literally hanging for like five moves we're just chilling here we are bringing our king trying to win these pawns okay that's all you need to do in the end games if the position is relatively balanced your opponent see he has no clue that the king is supposed to move it's like some stuck with some bubble gum on the g1 square play g5 okay we don't really mind that i mean he attacks our pawn so we're not gonna give him free pawn and next i just want to be taking this gonna use the king take the b3 pawn as well just look how uh, beautifully the king is uh about to infiltrate he plays rook d1 once again hanging the rook uh where you know just doing our thing here using the king and pushing pawns he's up to something there we take the free pawns of course yeah, just chilling. You may start checking. Okay, now time to push the pawn. It's an end game. You got the king active. Time to try and queen. And all of a sudden he realized because he has no other pawns to move and the rooks are like stuck. He starts using his king simply because he had no other pieces. And uh, okay, we're going to go rook to d1. Just uh, try and exchange all the pieces. Takes on c2, gonna take it on my king. Okay, we get that trade. And I'm gonna try to be fast here and uh, get the queen. I'm not uh, able to pre move. Okay, I'm gonna keep the rook just so we can get the ladder checkmate. That is the main construction to play for. And first of all, you wanna choose a side to go for the mate okay i would really recommend by first getting rid of the pawn because even if you're not in time the game is going to be a draw then it's important to start uh, cutting your opponent 
get a position similar to this and then you just uh rush you know as fast as you can and try to get this uh basically typical pattern with uh rook and queen opponent has uh yeah there's no counterplay and we managed to win the game i mean geez according to the chess.com coach we made it to 600 but 13 blunders have been played this game i wonder why was that uh curious about the accuracy though let's see 13 blunders what was the score okay we got a 53 53 it ain't much but it's honest work did you guys feel like this game was ever in like any doubt like i knew the rook was hanging for like i believe 20 consecutive moves at the end no you just want to use your king bring your king just like the goalkeeper goes into soccer and then push the pawns that is how you win the end games so with that being said i think can move on to the following game